Hi, and welcome to a house that demands more from the sunset. I'm Helen Palmer, and I'll be teaching this course with Miro Roman, who you can also see. Um, I am a writer and a theorist, and I am working as a senior scientist at ATTP um, Department for Architecture Theory and Philosophy of Technics at the Technical University of Vienna. So uh, I'm particularly interested in the way that we can uh, experiment with language and writing to create new worlds, and also the way we can experiment with the world to create new languages, maybe. Um, and that involves thinking about the relationship between creativity and fiction with philosophy and theory and um, these different ways we can write poetry and fiction, drama, um, poetics and rhetorics, all of these things. Um, and how we can, what it means to invent or to create. So I will be together with Helen teaching. My name is Miro Roman. I'm an architect a researcher and a lecturer at ETH Zurich. So I'm interested in, in the overlap of information technologies and architecture. So in, in my work, I try to play with uh, the plenty of information while kind of coding, designing and, and writing. So what I'm interested in is, is this abundance of information. So in ways we, we can handle it, in, in the ways it influences the, the way how we think about the world. So how we can navigate these information flows how can we work with them? And there comes a, a kind of an interesting paradox, which is that if we have huge amounts of data, what they will show us is not the truth about the world, but it will show us the world we want to see. So then the, the, the question is, in this kind of a setting, how do we write about things we care for? So how do we write with infinity of books? How do we take pictures if we have all the pictures from the world? So how do we work with these phenomena? And one of the, the ways how we try to think about it is to, to think of coding as a kind of a literacy. So similarly, in, in our course, A House That Demands More From The Sunset, we will try to play with this kind of literacy, try to develop an idea of what this literacy might be about by playing with a library which has more than 1,000 books. And in it, we will write a story about a house that demands more from the sunset. But what, what does it mean to demand more from the sunset? So here is a clip from, from an infomaniac, which kind of... Perhaps the only difference between me and other people was that I've always demanded more from the sunset. More spectacular colors when the sun hit the horizon. That's perhaps my only sin. So I think this is a kind of a funny way of, of capturing what this might be about. But now let's imagine that instead of this lady demanding more spectacular colors, we have a house that demands more from the sunset. So this is the, the topic of our course. So you should choose a house that you like, and then together with this house, demand more from the sunset. But again, of course, what does it mean to demand more from, from the sunset? So in my understanding, in our understanding, to demand more from the sunset means to have a certain fantasy, to have a certain idea of what this more is. And then this fantasy is synthetic. So it's yours, it's from the house, and it's kind of from the library as well. So it's in a way a negotiation between you, the house and the library. And I think what, inter what gets interesting is that each house cannot demand whatever. Each house can demand certain things that it has the capacity to demand as well as, as with people. So you can demand things that you like and you have a fantasy about. So, but what happens when you meet with a house and you try to demand something more together? So, um, as Miro has said, uh, this will require um, thinking about the concept of a synthetic persona. So, you could be a persona, the house could be a persona, together you could have a conversation, talk to one another, um, but this involves the creation of a synthetic persona. So, we'll think about what that means. So, it's going to involve uh, creation, invention, fantasy as well as talking to the, this library with a thousand books. Um, so the idea of, of a persona, you might have a bit of an idea of, it's a kind of a, a character, you could say, um, embodying or personifying a concept. Um, and if we're going to synthesize a persona, um, there are various ways we could do that process um, involving a persona being broken down into a number of different elements or components, which will require us to produce a synthetic scale to produce this synthetic persona. 
Um, and we can look at examples of how uh, different kinds of personae have been created by philosophers um, or writers or artists. Um, it's been called various things um, by other philosophers such as Deleuze and Guattari um, and their concept of the conceptual persona. Um, so we can talk about that um, and narrative persona. But what we're doing is something specific and different, um, unique, which is a synthetic persona. Let's hope to see you on Thursdays from 2 to 4 on these kind of dates. Thank you very much.